It's early September and I'm following a friend of mine, Evo, in his Land Rover Discovery 2. It's a wet start to a 10 day trip, but regardless, this is the trip I've been talking about and preparing for and it's finally begun. This is our first day on the road heading north to find a camp near the PTO Elven, and it's a fair distance to cover on our first day, so we're occasionally stretching our legs in rest stops, and like usual, I'm drinking tea while Evo is looking for fish, and he's ironically just seen a massive trout in a rest stop lake, marked with a sign saying fishing forbidden. But anyway, time to keep heading north as we're almost at our first camp. For a first camp, we really couldn't have done much better. There are some fantastic places to camp all along this river. It's obviously popular for fishing, and I've seen hunters congregate here early morning before heading out. This rough track at the water's edge though, with the sound of the river in the background is exactly what we were looking for. And Evo, like usual, is wasting no time. Well, it's been a long old day of driving, uh, but this is a, a really nice first camp for the 10 days we're gonna be away. So yeah, I'm doing dinner, Evo's fishing. Hopefully he catches some trout. He says he all, almost had one, but uh, we'll see. As I was saying on comms on the way up, there are loads of these guys around. This is a fantastic mushroom to eat. Hedgehog mushroom. Oh, one of the best. So I'm gonna pick a load of these, gonna have them with the sausages and the rice, and it uh, should be a good meal. These bad boys are growing everywhere. Unfortunately, Evo hasn't had any luck this evening on the fishing, apart from a few bites. But we're both going to try again tomorrow morning and see what we can add to the fridge. But now it's time for dinner. A few sausages, some rice and some hedgehog mushrooms should do the trick. Plus several cups of tea to wash it down. Hopefully we both sleep well to the sound of the river. And hopefully it doesn't make me regret all the tea I've just drunk. Well, it's the morning, obviously, and it was quite a nice night. I mean, the rain was real heavy and I woke up about 3 a.m. and couldn't get back to sleep too easily, but uh, it's been all right, isn't it? It's a lush spot. Yeah, it's a beautiful spot. Amazing. I mean, um, you might not know Evo, 
but he's been on the channel once before. We've known each other for quite a long time now, haven't we? Yeah. Sadly. We've been following his uh, previous channel and we talk a lot, like, a lot and uh, we met about three years ago, three and a half years ago. Yeah. When I actually, it was September, so it's ex like yeah. really three years ago. Yeah, it's three exactly years ago, years actually, ago. pretty much now. And yeah. then we went away fishing for three days. And you had a, a green discovery, didn't you? Yeah, a little bit uh, worse condition. Yeah, Still good this condition. one's lovely. Yeah. I really like what you've done this with this. And you've, been, you've been building it for a while. With the drawer system and the uh, just everything a permanent place, like a good place. I didn't have that in the other one. I just threw everything in with every camp. We've been preparing for this trip for a while. We've been talking about it for over a year. So the fact that we're actually now out, it's, strange. it's kind of weird. It's easy to let the day run away, and also the dozers are moving in on the other side of the river. So we decide to pack up camp and be ready to move on, but not before some fishing, which cannot be passed up in such a spot. We're fishing the swirls and the eddies on the sides of the rapids, both using spinning rods and small spinners. And it doesn't take long before we pull in some grayling. Most, though, are too small, but one is acceptable, which is getting prepped and going straight in the fridge. Ivo's busy fishing and uh, before we go, we're due to leave soon, or well, we want to leave soon anyway, go down river and uh, just see what the fishing's like, find other locations. I'm just taking advantage of some of the resources before we go. There's still a lot of hedge, hedgehog, hedgehog, hedgehog fungus around. Um, and there's actually a, um, a little Belit just here, a um, Belita sedulus, a penny bun or porcini, whatever you call it. Lots of different names, but Belita sedulus is the scientific name, but those are awesome uh, to eat. So there's also juniper, juniper berries as well, which I'll be gathering. So um, they can go in the fish when we cook it later and just kind of add a little bit of flavor to it. So um, nice time of year to be out really. I've never been one to present ideas that were never my own, so I have to say thanks to a Norwegian fisherman who gave me the tip on juniper with grayling. But it's time to continue our journey, say goodbye to this amazing location, and make our way further down river. We're just a short distance down river and the level must be up because it's flowing with some force. And further down from the bridge we find a forest road that runs along the river's edge and it looks like it takes us to a possible camp just by the side of the river. Before we get there though I can see a lot of good edible mushrooms that I have to take a look at first. It's that time of year and we can add them to almost every meal. Big old sarcodon.
can't really go wrong with a river like this, so it's no surprise that this location is also really, really nice. It's a perfect spot, very accessible with an easy track in, so we're probably not going to be alone, but that doesn't matter though as the day has run away with us, as expected, and we're both very hungry. Plus, I need a tea. Need being the key word there. Yeah, but this is one of the best. This is a big hedgehog mushroom, smell that. Look at this, look at these little boners. This is boner worthy. Saves you some money. You think when you go to Ica and you buy a pack of mushrooms and you pay like five quid for the crappy, ones that have grown in the um especially where we live yeah, yeah and then like you've got this stuff growing everywhere it's fantastic so anyway yeah what do you want for lunch is it sausages and mushrooms yeah just darn them in one room <laughs> <laughs> oh, <fine. Shall I set the table? Do you have your, your, your cup and this one, I guess? Yeah, I want Yorkshire tea. I've got the water there. Yeah. Wow, this is going like, to be like popcorn chicken. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you don't have to eat all the mushrooms, but I thought I'd pick some of them. We've got a lot. And, uh, While we eat, we discuss aborting our plans to continue east down river and talk about going northwest up river in search of more remote locations. Regardless though, we're going to stay here tonight. And obviously, Ivo's already been fishing in the time we've been here, and he's caught a very colourful and healthy looking pike in one of the eddies just off the side of the rapids. But anyway, time to set up camp. I'm going to get my little bed bag ready uh, just to take up in the roof tent so I can change in the morning and do a little bit of hygiene before I go to bed and when I wake up. So some skid free undies always need to be inspected first. They've been cleaned properly, they've been cleaned properly. So a few socks, change my socks every day obviously and uh, a shirt tomorrow and that's basically it so that goes that all goes in here goes in there the dirty clothes stay in here and any rubbish that I take down stays in there and then I put that in the bin in the morning and that's basically like goes in the roof tent ready to roll that. It's going with dinner. The mushrooms around here keep pulling my attention wherever we go. But to be fair, the fish and the mushrooms combined are stocking up our supplies and I'm all about food for free. But what a cracking second day it's been. Plus we've gathered plenty of fatwood from that fallen pine, so the fire will produce a bright flame and burn all night. This fire's a joy. Yeah, it's good. It's good.
Well, it's bright and early in the morning. And I'm on my first cup of Yorkshire tea. I think three more and I'll be, I'll be operational. But it was a very sound night, extremely comfortable, maybe 13 degrees C, so not very cold. Lovely time of year, really, because the flies are all sort of gone and, you know, it's not cold, but it's not warm and it's just very fresh and the leaves are falling, the colours are changing. I think Ivo is fast asleep and his snoring is probably why I haven't caught anything this morning. That's what I'm telling myself anyway. But to wake him from his slumber, I begin breakfast and it doesn't take long for him to emerge from his tent. Mate, these guys, uh, all their beer cans rolled down into the water. Really? Yeah, I picked them all up and I put them back up at the fire. Yeah, I don't think they meant for that to happen. But it's just the wind or something has blown it. Take your pick, mate. Take your pick. This is definitely a camp I'm going to mark on Gaia GPS, and I think it's a perfect spot for a family camp, although you would have to watch the water if you had young children. But it's still pretty early, we're watered and fed, and the plan is to cover some distance today. So we're leaving momentarily. We're 20 minutes into our journey and the Land Rover has unfortunately gone into limp mode. Ivo thinks it's the excess fluid he added back at camp, so we've stopped to take a look. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know whether there's a... Yeah, pressure know, pressure obviously must... I mean, I filled it up, it's overfilled and suddenly out of this, so I... Yeah, well, there you go. We'll start, first, start with that. First option, I guess. Why don't you suck it out? Pretty simple fix, and it seems to have done the job, and now we're back on track. The temptation to explore this river is really stalling our progress north, but this is the best way to travel in my opinion, and we're just going with it. We're only 30 minutes up river from our last camp, and the plan is not to stay here another night, but we got a tip from a local guy about a fantastic fishing spot, which is just a short hike up river from where we parked, and as we make our way there, and at first glance what a spectacular location, Evo's very excited and he's hoping to catch some trout.
It's hard to convey on video, but we've been fishing for several hours. It's been surprisingly quiet though, but the one Grayling Evo call is big enough to add to the fridge. Plus this place is beautiful, so catching something isn't what it's all about sometimes. But we do want to make some progress north, so we're going to say goodbye to the PT Elven and find a quieter spot to camp or cook, or both. track to the right that we just drove past. I mean this this is a nice camping location I'll be honest I mean we can't really fish very easily here without waders because it looks like swamp all around the, the river the lake but I, I gotta eat something and I gotta drink something so regardless of what we do let's stop and have some lunch yeah yeah I'm hungry okay Well, the last fishing spot was really good. Um, Evo caught this second cast. I almost had one, but lost it. Um, but uh, there we go. So we've got dinner. We've got two grayling for dinner tonight. Some porcini mushrooms, some saps. Um, you know, we'll just see what happens. But uh, we're still not sure where we're going to go. I mean, this spot seems all right to be fair, but it's just uh, we plan to be a lot further north than where we are now. But, you know, that's just the way it goes. We're enjoying ourselves and just taking it as it comes, which is kind of the best sort of traveling, really, instead of going along some sort of itinerary. So, uh, Evo's knocking up some pancakes. Apparently they're gonna be amazing. So, in for a treat. For a treat, mate. Right, mate. Ooh. It's looking a bit ropey, isn't it, mate? Sorry, did I just... What? I threw oil off. Oh, yeah. To be fair to Evo, he's made some good pancakes, so we're loading up for the journey ahead. We've decided to leave this location and continue northwest into some more remote wilderness. Although this is always a risky move this late in the day, especially given this place is actually really nice for an overnight camp. But anyway, the decision is made and it's going to be a long drive, so we better start driving before the food kicks in. We've been driving north for a couple of hours now, and we've reached the wilderness area we intend on exploring. The roads and the tracks in this area feel endless, so we've accepted it's going to be a late one tonight. This particular road in has a small washout, where heavy rain has taken the track away. Not a major obstacle, and shouldn't be a problem, but it's worth mentioning that this will be Evo's first real obstacle in his discovery too, so he's pretty excited.
With that out of the way, we continue on, and the road looks pretty standard, even with the abandoned caravan, which is pretty normal out here. But further on, the road is now starting to deteriorate, and the softer soil near the edge is making me a little bit nervous, mainly because of the drop-off to the right. We're a long way in, so rather than reversing the distance, it's better just to keep moving forward, until the road becomes normal again. End up down there. So we just take this next bit um, very easy. I don't, I don't know what it will be like after this. I'm starting to regret leaving the other spot. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, I mean, the, the angles aren't too bad, but we've just got to be very, very careful. It's, it's more that it's more if this if, if the ground here is too soft. Yeah. Um, but it's getting better over there. Can we just get get rid of this rock. Yeah. Oh, we, we can't. can't. We can't. It's too big. Oh no no, you're you're super strong. Let's get that out of the way. And um, let's just make sure we can. Uh, Evo's Land Rover is making this look a lot less sketchy than mine. A high lift and soft suspension isn't always a good thing. Or maybe I should have just left my sway bar connected. But anyway, the track isn't becoming normal again. There's a river crossing, and I'm not entirely sure how I feel about it. The level isn't high, the rocks underneath are big and slippery, and the road on the map carries on the other side. It's late, so we're going to give this a go, and I'm going first. And then it's Evo's turn. I mean, you could just slide, right? And we also don't know what's there. We should have just stayed at the last camp. Yep, sorry. That's all right. Not your fault. I, I persuaded you. <laughs> That went very smoothly, and we're back on a normal forest track again, heading to a lake with what looks to be a parking area next to it. Before that though, one more deep washout needs negotiating, and the logs that once filled it have all washed away. Well, I'm in it now, I'm in the washout, I've got to try and get out. Yeah, so shoot up back up? No, I'm going forward. Okay. Ready? Yeah? The back side, it was all the way up to, your, to the back back. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I think it looks a lot worse than it is. Yeah. But, uh... My window's open so you can talk. Okay. Yeah, keep coming. Back up. All right, okay. 
Let's go. Just keep coming. Um, You're very big tires, I don't. It, no. You, you like it hit your fucking uh, um, spare tire. Did it? Yeah. It hit my spare tire? Yeah. Holy crap, okay. Well, not hard, but you were very, you, you got away with it, but that's why I'm worrying. Okay, I'll go behind. Just go very slowly, Evo. Yeah, yeah. But it's gonna drop. There's nothing I can do about that. No, it will drop, but just go very slowly, okay? You say stop when I need to? Uh, keep going. Is it on the bumper? <laughs> Whoa, watch out, watch out. Um, you're stuck. I'm stuck, I think. I'm stuck on the bumper. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mate, you're not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. Alright, stop. Hey, wait, what if I lift the back? I don't know, but there's a smoke coming up. <laughs> That's because of the exhaust. Is it? I, I would think so. Okay, I'm sorry, I shouldn't laugh. It's what, just what if I lift the back? You make me laugh. Um, yeah, lift the back, lift the back. Uh, there's an arrow over that already, so I guess I can. Shall I pull you? A, yeah, you have to. Yeah, okay. So I'm just going to tighten the line. Um, I can't see it. Yep. Okay. Line. The line is tight now. So I'm going to start pulling you. Okay. Well, my traction control is already flipping out. Like trying to uh, fix it. You need to drive to help me. I am. I am. Well, it sounds amazing on the back. I think I'm free. Yeah, you're good, you're right, that, that was easy, that was easy. Okay, we'll stop, yeah? Looks good. Pain damage, Your maybe. vehicle took it like a champ, that rear bumper saved you. Good job you bought that. And, it, and you got time. the diff armour. Yeah. Just saved you quite a bit. Is that a bent shock mount? No, it's meant to be like that, isn't it? <laughs> Caught a bit of mud up front, mate. Well, I tried kicking it away. <laughs> you, oh, yeah, you've got a tree. You, you brought with a Christmas tree with you. Oh, uh, I don't know how long that's been there. There might have been a while because I hit some wood. Oh, you uh, should pull I that out. I check, with the I check with the light, but I couldn't see anything. But I was checking from there. So. Try and yank that out. Oh, my God. I wonder how stuck, stuck that one is. Oh, oh no. not so bad. No, no, no. no, no. Yeah. That wasn't the thing I heard. Yeah, but you're all good with the armour and stuff you've got into there. I think... I pretty much got away with everything. There was a time I went over a log and I nearly lost, uh, I locked my front steering, but... The only, the only uh, uh, tree you went over uh, that was sketchy was the first one, the birch, because it, yeah, it slammed up. It flipped back up, didn't it? But I think it just hit my control arms because the sump was kind of protected. Yeah, looks fine to me. This is it, dinner for two. Very romantic. Got a, uh, some rice crackers, a banana, two bowls of cereal, two bananas. You are double the size of me, so it sort of makes sense, really. It's only that it's empty, doesn't it? There's no. How do you feel about that last? Up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> just thinking about it. How do you feel about what we just did? It escalated it quite awesome. quickly, didn't yeah. it? Yeah, and more and more. Started with like a little wash washout, yeah. deep ditch. Then it was the the sketchy edge with like a yeah, that was not a cliff. But my, like my vehicle made that look a lot worse than yours because of the height and the softer suspension. Everything was worn. Yeah. I should have left my sway bar on, I think, just to stiffen it up a bit. But yeah. And then we got to the the river crossing that was sketchy as hell with like a 
the current and the, the deepness of it and the, the, the giant the rocks. big rocks yeah the cars of filth yeah they've been through totally the walls covered. if you were going to do a bit to yours i'd just put a two inch lift on it in 32s max yeah that's the idea 32s or 33 that's the idea but uh work some more. Uh, I know the feeling. It's either the wind or Bigfoot's trying to get in. I can't work it out yet. Or he's or he's humping the tent. Possibly. I can't say we've had the best night's sleep. The wind was brutal last night, but the tent didn't have any issues to be fair to it. Plus my earplugs finally came in handy, as much as I hate wearing them. But we can't complain really, look at where we are. But this morning's agenda is checking over all the collateral damage from yesterday, getting our gear organised and squared away, and loading up on Evo's pancakes for the next part of the journey. Is that a pretty one is it? But, um... To be honest, it doesn't matter what they look like, it's about how they taste. That's what I tell people. towards Yokmok today. Um, we won't be staying there very long, we'll be carrying on further up past Yilivare, but we're going to stop in Yokmok. I need some super glue to try and repair the drone after last night's crash, or yesterday evening's crash, and um, also um, Evo just wants to double check his transfer case fluid, and, uh, and that'll be that, and then we'll be on our way. So um, that's what we're up to. We're both really looking forward to getting to Yokmok. It's a beautiful part of the country. But before we get there, I've noticed something's not quite right with my steering wheel. I've bent something. Ready to stop? Yeah, I think we should pull over. My steering wheel isn't straight and, um, and I'm going in a straight line. So I, I, I think that giant log yesterday has, uh, has screwed something or I've screwed something on the giant log. I stupidly drove over a huge wet fallen tree and locked my steering 
trying to reverse back off of it. Something is definitely bent, or best case, I've just knocked my tracking out. But there's nothing I can do about it now. It's driving fine, so I guess we just keep going. We're a short distance after the crossing, and unfortunately the Discovery has gone into limp mode again. My theory is the water crossing at speed, but at this point we can only guess. I checked the automatic transmission fluid and it, and it came out again right away, and they always say like uh, it needs to come out like uh, dripping, so it, it should be fine. It, 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 that level never goes down. Yeah. Um. Maybe we should just drive and see if it does it again, I don't know. Could be anything, could be transmission, could be heat, could be uh, fluids, could be uh, water. Yeah, I have no idea, dude. I, have, I, I just don't know anything about that system or Land Rovers or the sensors and and what manages that system. Even now, it just uh, keeps doing it when I have it in, uh, uh, not even on yet. I think what you're going to need to do in the long term is get some sort of ODB reader with a, with a plug-in sort of computer console that allows you to read codes and actually know what the vehicle's doing. Because, I've, I've, well, I was watching a video the other day of someone doing expeditions in that same vehicle and and they have like something they can plug in and do code and fault fault reading and stuff. Yeah, would be useful. Yeah, it's 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 a way now again. Where as soon as I start a car, that's the weird thing. Well, let's drive a bit more. It possibly could have been the water crossing. I don't know, but you didn't have any trouble after the last one, did you? Uh, the one in the night. No, there was nothing happening then. The Discovery seems to be fine now, but I'm putting my money on that water crossing at speed. I think if taken slower, it wouldn't have thrown a warning, but who really knows without diagnostic tools? But you'll notice now that we're following another Jeep Cherokee XJ, and this isn't totally by chance, as we've been in contact while on this trip, but we did just happen to cross paths on the Volarum Dam, and we've all decided to camp together tonight on the edge of a forest road by a lake. The guys in the XJ are Edwin, Linda and their pit bull Bruce, and they've been travelling around for a few weeks in their 2000 model XJ, with a Wildland Rock Cruiser roof tent on top. They've got a pretty good setup, and it's probably one of the cleanest Jeeps I've seen underneath so far. But I'm going to put the cameras down tonight, and we're going to enjoy the evening together. Edwin was very generous with the whiskey last night, probably for the best, because the burgers Evo cooked were definitely loaded with E. coli. But that wasn't his fault to be fair, the battery malfunctioned for the fridge the previous day, and I think we ate them just in time. It's been good though, to meet new friends, and it was a great night chatting around the fire. But they're going south and we're going north, so we've said our goodbyes. Also, you probably noticed my drone's working again. A pretty slick repair. Anyway, time to drive further north. We can just drive through the centre or somewhere and just figure out, think, find our way. Well, we've left Yachtmock behind now and uh, that area, and we're moving further north. You can probably see a 
further north you go, the further uh, into the seasons you go, and the, the colours in the trees are a lot different up here than they are back where we've driven from, from South Lapland anyway. But it was a nice surprise last night bumping into Edwin and Linda and meeting them in their Cherokee on their own travels. They'd already been out for a couple of weeks and I think they've got another week or maybe a bit more to go, so they're heading back south now. But uh, yeah, if you're watching guys, it was great to meet you, beautiful Jeep, probably one of the most rust-free Cherokees I've ever seen, and uh, yeah, hope you have a great trip. We've been driving for just over an hour, and we've driven into an old copper mining settlement just north of Yilivara. It's a pretty interesting place to visit if you're ever up here, and it covers quite a large area. Volcanic glass is littered everywhere though, and it's extremely sharp, so I wouldn't advise driving in too far on street tyres. But by far the most interesting place is the mine itself, although it's not a tourist attraction, and you're not meant to go inside it. It's a hazardous place, and the doors have most likely just been breached by kids, which allows bigger kids like us to enter. There could be something in there, right? Huh? What do you mean there could be something in there? And what what's golem? That? Like a... Uh... With a Sammy waiting for you. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine the bear just fucking... <laughs> it's dark, mate. It's very dark. Luckily I've got my very fleshy flashlight. Can't see shit. Can't see uh... I have to watch my head. It's, it's sketchy as well. I'm filming you, go ahead. Oh, I'll go first. Then. And you have the vibe. Wow. It's nice. Very deep, very clear. Yes, sir. Oh, wow. It's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Look at that. Good to see a can of monster doing its thing out in nature. If you can walk straight up, I'm like... Uh, looks like that's all collapsed, huh? Yeah. Well, I would so want to go in there. What, up there? Yeah. Just that's there. where Dildo Baggins is, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting. It's his hideout. Yeah, he's up there, all right. It's obviously filled up with water, but once upon yeah. a time people were down there, weren't this they, like working? The, this was probably like a main shaft, like there. It's crazy deep. I didn't realise we were walking on that. Let's get off of it. Some animal mm, Smeagol's definitely in here. It's probably trailing us right now. Unfortunately, Gollum has blocked the entrance. But Evo stepped up and took one for the team and Gollum eventually lets us out. God only knows what Evo's had to do. But we've left the mine now, and we've made our way a bit further north. It's really deteriorating actually, maybe after this bit we go and let some air out. We're following a terrain track out to what looks to be a nice lakeside camp, which is going to mark our final northerly camp before we begin our journey home. So let's hope it's a good one. <laughs> Thank you. 
go. It may not feel like it on camera, but we've been on this track for over an hour, and we're almost at the end. The track looks like it's been created for potential mining. I say this because there are drill sites scattered all along it, with core samples all over the floor. But we've begun descending now, nearer the lake we're hoping to camp at, and the recent heavy rain has made the ground very damp, so we need to take it easy and not rut the track. We finally arrived, with not a huge amount of daylight to spare, but what a fantastic location. This is a great spot to mark the halfway point of the trip. Well, we're in a staggering location. Evo looks like he's on his way back, he's been fishing. Just preparing some wood for a fire, and I think we're gonna make some dinner. He's caught a couple of trout, although they're pretty small, so we probably won't eat them this time. We've got plenty of food with us. 
and uh, we're both pretty tired. We've been on this off-road track for a couple of hours. I mean, it's not technically an off-road track, it is a road on the map, but it looks like it hasn't been used for a long, long time and it's a bit dilapidated, so it's slow going. But, uh, you know, nice to try the vehicles out, nice to see what they can do, Evo's happy. This is kind of his first sort of major off-road test with his disco and he's he's over the moon, it's a hell of a performer. What's the matter? Oh, he's mad about fishing, he almost had another trout. Let's go see what he's doing. Have you got another one? What do you want for dinner, Evo? Are you going to fish longer? Okay. You do whatever you want, mate. Well, that's great, isn't it? It's what you wanted. I'm too tired. I can't be bothered. I just want to get some dinner on. Never mind. Get down. So you had a couple, yeah? Well, I only caught two. I had one that is just bunted and now I had two in a row right here. Ivo's pretty excited about the thought of catching trout. And we're going to buy a fishing card and spend the day here tomorrow and see if we can catch a few trout for dinner over 35 centimetres. The weather's looking great today. A perfect day to try out the inflatable bark raft I picked up from a mate of mine near Yokmok. It's a great little boat with a hard seat, so fly fishing is a lot more accessible for a beginner like me. I've caught a few trout on the spinner and some on the fly. Ivo's caught some as well, and between us we've had about 18 in total, but only two are over 35 centimetres and can be kept for food. Well, that's it, mate. Yeah. Halfway through. Well, over halfway through. Yeah. But, uh, On the way back now. The way back is going to start. Yeah. But this is really where I stop filming, or where we stop filming, um, and the rest of the trip we're not going to film, obviously, because it's quite a lot of work to film this sort of stuff, and it has been a lot of fun. Yeah, it's but, been good. Yeah, it's been some epic trails. Yeah. How do you feel about the disco? Yeah, it's been good. Need some bigger tires, but it's, <laughs> uh, it's, it's performing. Yeah, but it did everything uh, my vehicle did on, on street tires, basically. I think if you got bigger tires on that Discovery, it would beat the crap out of mine off-road. Yeah, it's, uh, it's doing good. I think, so I think yeah. the traction control is amazing, actually. Yeah, it works. I saw it last winter as well. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's a nice thing to... Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. I'm really impressed with it. But it's been a been a great trip. Well, we've still got a few, quite a few days to go. We stayed here pretty much all day. We've just been fishing. Um, it's been good actually. Caught some trout and stuff, and you, you've been pretty happy about it. Yeah, I've had a couple of trout on the fly rod, which was nice. Lost quite a few, but yeah, likewise. They were tiny. Yeah, yeah. well, not, Strong, not that big. Yeah, but yeah, it's the end. I hope you've enjoyed this video anyway, um, obviously this is not a trip I do very often, we do very often or, or anything like that, we've been talking about doing this trip for a really really long time and we didn't really plan any of it did we? Um, although no. it might seem like it would, you'd have to plan a trip like that, we just literally went for it. Yeah we did maybe one or two spots that, that were probably going to be like a uh... Uh, yeah, a spot where we're gonna stop, like Copper Mine. Yeah. That spot is basically the only one, I think. Man. Yeah, that's yeah. it. That's the only spot we thought about. Yeah, and the rest was just uh, sort of winging it and look on the map and yeah. Kind a lot of, of Kind Gaia. of spontaneous and that's the way I, I like it as well. Like it's Yeah, it's a nice trip because it kind of flows easy. The days go slow. You're not rushing to, to make some itinerary and get to places. You're just taking it as it comes and 
enjoying yourself and, and obviously we use the evenings sometimes um you know to watch porn hub in our tents <laughs> now, now obviously to look at gaia it is under wind that's shaking the tent it's just <laughs> it's just evo um to look at gaia uh and like plan locations and stuff and like you know just say oh okay that looks good that looks good and then you just have an abc kind of near each other and just head off in that direction and see what you can find but by far the hardest places are places like this where you have good access to fishing and the vehicles can be close to that location but uh but we it, seem to manage manage to have done it yeah. yeah but your vehicle did amazing mate i'm dead impressed with it i've always loved discoveries i think they're great four-wheel drives and you know they look good and but they're spacious you've got a massive amount of capability but you've got the comfort of a, of a sort of almost regular vehicle when driving it so it's not like you know rattling and shitty when you're on the the, the motorway and everything but mm. but yeah it's been good um but we're going to end it here we've got a pack up and we're going to start getting off of this track again which is going to take ages and then air up back on the main road and then we're doing a couple of hours back south um and try and find a spot uh, to camp basically for the night and then maybe we yes. we eat our catch of the day and see how it goes but uh, i hope you've enjoyed the vid obviously uh yeah and <laughs> great great ending Cut this out and yeah then... okay. well i hope you've enjoyed the vid and um you know it's a bit of an epic one if you've made it this far and you're not asleep yet then obviously maybe we did did something right maybe it was exciting to watch it's an epic trip they gotta love it yeah it was, it was cool they got to but um yeah we'll see you in the next one take care bye, -bye.